Hello, Inbound Flops. I'm Zach Not Kyle, or Zach for short. And today, I wanted to discuss a recent skin design in League of Legends, recent as in like three months ago or something, that I genuinely enjoy, but it's a little bit slept on in favor of other skin conversations. Yordle girlies, buckle up, because I'm actually praising you for once. We're talking about Empyrean Vex today. And this is kind of like a prequel video to one of my end of the year videos where I talk about the best skins of 2022 and why they were so good. And this is definitely very high up but I want to make a whole video on it because Empyrean Vex did something that not many other skins were able to do this year. But before we get started, make sure you follow me on my various social medias. You can subscribe to me here. You can follow me on Twitter at Inc. You can follow me on Instagram at ZachNotKyle. And I have announcements about my upcoming book projects on there, so make sure to just tune in there. And then I'm also on Hive now, so you could go follow me at ZachNotKyle. And with that out of the way, let's get started. So when I found out about the Empyrean skins, my brain does that thing that it normally normally does when I'm scared for a skin line, which is, cool concept, sis, but how are you not gonna be immediately compared to all of your more popular skin lines? My worries were for Cyber Pop, Star, Nemesis, and Project comparisons to flood in for the Empyrean line. The skin line upon first glance seemed to be as if they could filter into either Project or Star Guardian primarily, with Cyber Pop being an absent critique that I had in the back burner. Every champion suffered that treatment unless you, your name is Pike, Lux, or Vex. Why? Because Empyrean skin concepts don't leave enough room for interpretation when the character design team is given the prompt of black, neon, spook. This can lead to varying results, like Empyrean Jax, which has one of the worst splash arts in Modern League only because of that horrific red color in the background ruining any flow that the skin colors could have had. That really hurts to say because the artist is such a good designer too, Bo Chen, who did amazing work on Cosmic Lux, Battle Queen, Rel, and more. He also just did Cassante's art, which looked so so good, but I think the prompt given to him just wasn't a good one. It can also lead to things like the aforementioned legendary Pike, which is a perfect lead into this universe with Neon soaring everywhere he does and an evil sense immediately known when he steps in the room. Lux has a brilliant flip on who she is as a character that isn't quite robot enough for Project, but not quite on Star Nemesis levels of character design. <laughs> Zach. Then we reach Vex, who might be the best goddamn design in this lore. The hidden emotions behind her mask, her shadow's fucking eye makeup looking better than anything I could attempt. When I saw Vex's skin for this line, the immediate thought I had was what the skin line was probably intended to be. An ethereal acid trip of colors, blurred lines, messy alliances, and unclear intentions. While this skin is fan-fucking-tastic on its own though, once you get to the chromas, this quickly becomes a visual spectacle. In every chroma, Vex's mask gets a different pattern on it for every chroma fucking genius. This can be perceived in a few different ways. Option one is that it could be Vex switching emotions like their colors, a simple edit that isn't something of significance to a Yordle who doesn't care about such silly things. And option two is that it looked fucking cool and Riot liked it. Either way, thanks Riot. Talking about the splash is also important. It's such a perfect introduction to the Empyrean line. If we go with the ethereal acid trip theming, then yeah, this splash wins no fucking contest. Sorry, Vex is laughing. Or not, because sad. This is a modern splash with a dynamic fun angle that makes a short character look fearful and imposing. And that takes fucking skill, because most of the Yordles, except for more recently, have not been portrayed in anything other than a happy, fun-go-lucky light. Even characters like Rumble are treated with a little bit of a squeaky clean image. Props to Horus Who, who did not only this splash, but Vex's original splash art. How full circle of them. Also fun fact, Sue also did Space Groove Teemo, Yordle theme. Star Nemesis Morgana, Slay, Spirit Blossom Kidron and Tristana, once again making Yordle seem mysterious and ominous, and more. So why do I make such an argument for this being one of the best 1350 RP skins in Modern League on the tier of things like Spirit Blossom Kindred and Evelyn, Stun Eater Kale, Arcana Ari, Withered Rose Elise, and more? Well, the skins I've mentioned have taken their characters, plopped them in another universe, made them distinctively characterized in said universe, and ran with a specific piece of them that made them stand out among the rest, or made them worth spending the money for them. Talking about the comparisons, Spirit Blossom Kindred honed in on insanely good effects, Evelyn was a completely subversive concept that once again honed in on effects, Sun Eater Kale was fucking ethereal and godlike, how did it not get the legendary over Sivir, Riot, I 
just want to talk? Arcana Ari gave her a mask and better effects than any other skin she has had. Star Nemesis Fiddlesticks made him a campy villain that everyone loved. Space Groove Lissandra makes an evil yet colorful villain. And Space Groove Gragas shows League's immense growth with character designs and concepts. Vex falls in here because of her utilization of not only great effects, universe aesthetic, and incredible visuals, and single-handedly carrying the shit out of the skin line, but for her use of a piece of the game that so many see as arbitrary and a cash grab for Riot being the Chromas. Especially with things like Star Guardian Akali, where the Chromas were nerfed in certain senses, well, let Vex prove you wrong with her several new colors and masks. Then again, even after Riot was nerfing Chromas after that whole Star Guardian Akali fiasco, then again, all of SG was a mess. I have two videos on it, go watch them. Vex is still prevailing with a bomb ass skin regardless of spending the extra 290 RP per Chroma. I know everyone is talking about Pike a lot recently because of his perceived favoritism for getting a second legendary and a mythic skin this year, but Vex really should be the focus of attention because look at this. I know we tend to only look at the skins we don't like and go teehee it's so bad or talk about how favored someone is, hi Pike, but I think it's important to also acknowledge the small victories for Riot in their skin department rather than yelling about the 18th Lux skin. By the way, you all need to shut up about that, Lee Sin, Twisted Fate, and Riven all have 15, but I don't see any of you yelling about them. Also, this Lux skin is actually justified because of this one being one of our best in an actual character departure, but whatever, go ahead and scream to the void, League Twitter. Alright, bringing it back, in conclusion, Empyrean Vex might be the best LOL skin, if not of 2022, possibly ever for its price. I recommend everyone here becomes a Vex main, because she is stupid fun, and has this bomb ass skin, especially after the Dawnbringer flop that we got. I highly recommend picking her up. Stupid fun, 10 out of 10. As far as my next few videos go, I am going to do a couple of videos at the end of the year for League. I'm also going to be talking about the Overwatch Season 1 Battle Pass fiasco. I'm going to be talking about the new Brawlhalla champion in my next video, Tezka. God, I have so many thoughts on Brawlhalla's state right now. But yeah, regardless of what game you're into, I hope you stick around just to hear all of my takes on the world of game design. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to keep up with me and everything that I'm doing. Now get out there, get on the road, and be a nice human. Bye, sis.